Hello everyone, Sucker you here, and welcome back to the History of Everything Podcast YouTube channel. And this is going to sound a little bit odd to start out a video, but um, do you guys know just how old writing is? Again, I know, a little bit weird way to start it out, but you have to understand there's some potentially big news here that I think is going to blow our understanding of really how old writing is. Generally speaking, if we're talking about conventional knowledge when you think of writing, well, scholars are typically going to agree that the earliest kind of proper writing is something that appeared around five to 6,000 years ago, this being in Mesopotamia, which is in present day Iraq. Now at this time, it wasn't just writing. We're talking about early pictorial signs that gradually over time would be substituted by a complex system of characters, each of which would come to represent sounds, such as in the first case of Sumerian, the language of Sumer in Southern Mesopotamia, as well as other languages. But that is what we think of when we're thinking of writing, at least in its proper form. And so weirdly enough, there's a piece of news that has released recently that may potentially change our entire understanding of writing and just how far this pushes back. You see, it is very possible that writing is actually 10 to potentially 20,000 years older than we actually thought it was, at least according to a recent study that we're hearing about this month. So get this. I'm sure that a number of you who are watching this video have probably seen different images of paintings or murals of animals and creatures inside of caves, things that are all across Europe and all over the world. Well, that is very important to this conversation. You see, around 20,000 years ago, Ice Age hunter-gatherers that were all across Europe would decorate caves with a variety of animal drawings, things that would range from salmon to cattle to everything in between. And sometimes these creatures would be accompanied by a series of symbols that included dots, lines, asterisks, and crosses, you know, things that were more abstract. They weren't a physical representation of an animal, and no one really knew exactly what these things were or what they meant, but they kept on seeing these repeating patterns in the murals. They just couldn't really make sense of them until potentially just now. You see, there was a new study that was published in the Cambridge Archaeological Journal, and in that study, scientists have proposed that these sequences were actually an early form of writing, something that recorded animal behavior. And this is big because if this is confirmed, that would mean that humans had developed a kind of proto-writing system, potentially potentially thousands upon thousands of years earlier than what we had previously thought. Of course, we're talking simple symbols, things that we don't necessarily know if this meant sounds or anything, and that's very unlikely if they did. In which case, this isn't a proper writing form, but it is proto-writing. It is something that would lead a kind of in-between stage between ancient, I don't even know what to describe it, and modern writing. So in the study, what the team did is they examined three different sets of shapes, the lines, the dots, and the symbols that kind of look like Y's. And what they hypothesized that these marks represented was the months of the year that would convey information about the corresponding animals that they were next to, whether it was their mating habits, their birthing habits, things like this. Which, mind you, is very specific. And thus, you may then wonder, well, who is it that would study this? Who is it that would potentially figure this kind of thing out? Well, that would be this guy, uh, Bennett Bacon, a London-based furniture conservator who is a independent researcher. He is actually the guy who, I guess as a kind of hobby, came up with this as an initial hypothesis. He went around, compiled a massive database of animal drawings from global literature, web archives, everything. And in this, it revealed 606 different examples of animals accompanied by lines, or dots, and another 256 animals with sequences that included a Y-shaped mark. Bacon then went and contacted some experts, and together they went and analyzed the data, concluding that these marks were a form of lunar calendar. The way that it would essentially work is that each dot or line, at least as they would suggest, would represent one month, with the number of the symbols indicating how many months after the start of spring each animal's mating season would begin. As an example, if you had drawings of horses, Horses, then this is something that would typically have three marks, whereas mammoths with a longer gestation period, I guess you could say, would have five. Not a single sequence contained more than 13 marks, and if you're looking at the lunar calendar, where it's based off the lunar cycle, and not our standard month system in which there's 12 months, well, there are 13 lunar cycles in a year. And so the placement of the Y mark next to the animal would then indicate what month in the year that that animal was going to be giving birth, which is so wild and specific 
specific to think about, but you really have to understand that we are talking about Paleolithic hunter-gatherer societies. So historically speaking, this is a group of people that the tracking of these specific traits when it comes to animals is going to be something that is very, very important. If anything was going to be tracked, this is probably what it would be. But before I get ahead of myself, I, I have to go ahead and say that this is not something that is a done deal. Not every single person agrees with the hypothesis here. You see, according to people like Melanie Chang, who is a paleoanthropologist at Portland State University, quote, upper paleolithic people had the cognitive capacity to write and keep records of time, but the hypothesis is not well supported by the results, and they do not address alternative interpretations of the marks that they analyzed. Like they provided an answer to the problem, but not necessarily proof that it is exactly that. Additionally, another issue with this is that the team only analyzed three of 32 different sets of recurring symbols, and so by focusing only on those three, which were the most common, yes, you're more likely to be able to get some kind of pattern out of it, but simultaneously, you really have no idea what the other symbols potentially mean, or if they're related, or really any other kind of details about them. But it is a start, and more than likely, more information will come out of the study, more things will continue, and who knows, potentially five, ten years down the road, the entire understanding that we have of writing and history will completely change, because as it turns out, our ancestors were significantly smarter than we actually give them credit for. And that is a possibility that gives me a lot of excitement and makes me very happy. But in the end, that is all the information that I have for you here today. Thank you everyone for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and also let me know in the comment section below what it is that we should be covering next. I can tell you that in the next couple weeks, what it is that I'm going to be doing is probably releasing a series of videos covering France and French history, because my wife and I are going to France and we're going to be doing a variety of different things in there. I'd actually love to start doing more stuff on uh, battles and other aspects of history that would be pretty cool. But if you have any suggestions, please do let me know in the comment section below. The amount of support that this channel got after the previous video that I did on Roman concrete is amazing. And if there's anything that I can do to help continue the growth of this channel, I really am grateful for all of you. Thank you, everyone who has been watching and supporting me. I really love being able to share all these different stories with you, and there's so much more that I want to make. Thank you, everyone, and you have a good rest of your day. Goodbye, guys.